Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Unsolved Mysteries Rewatch Podcast with your host, Brian McKenna. I am Brian McKenna. What's up, everyone? Good to be here. Another episode down, another recording we are doing. What's up? Um, This one, uh, Unsolved Mysteries Volume 4, Episode 3, The Severed Head. Um, We're recording this live in the Robert Stack studio. Um, This is, let me tell you something. This this episode, I don't even <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this episode. Like what you know, I I have my theories on it. Um, you know, it, let's just start it off. Basically, uh this episode is a weird one. Uh it's out in uh Econ- Economy Borough, Western Pennsylvania. Um I don't really love the state of Pennsylvania, and this is another reason why. Um, I just it's it's just kind of one of those states that I'm just sort of like, nah, this eh, is, you know, Philadelphia is okay, uh, Pittsburgh's all right, but every I I don't know, it's just a weird place, and this makes it even weirder. Um, basically, uh, this episode starts off with. Um, a kid, about 15 years old, walking um, in Economy Borough, Western Pennsylvania, which apparently, uh, I don't know anything about it. A lot of people say, nice people, expensive houses, beautiful farms. You know, it's this absolutely gorgeous kind of place, uh, serene, you know, with lots of trees, the polar opposite of where I live in New York City. And it's just this beautiful place. It's a Friday afternoon, and this 15-year-old kid who is, you know, lives in the neighborhood, is walking through the woods, um, and he thought what he was seeing was a gut pile, um, which I, I didn't, I don't, I'm not a hunter, I don't know what that means. Uh, I, I had to st- I had to actually Google what a gut pile was. Basically, it's with deer hunters. They, they leave part of the deer in the woods, um, and then he ends up finding a, a severed human head, um, just clean off the body. You know, like we were in Game of Thrones, where it was just cut off. Um, I you know a lot of the people that I talked to about this, you know, episode that. They were all like, you know, you just want to know who she is. You just, you know, you just want to know who she is. And it's kind of like, um, I don't want to know who she is. Um, I kind of want to know who her family is. Because how come none of them are looking for her head? Nobody seems concerned. There's no one who's just like, has anyone seen grandma's head? You know, that's the thing that's weird to me. Uh, Now, you could say, well, Brian, maybe they don't know that her head is missing. And I'm like, maybe. Um... I, I don't know. It's just a, I, I want to know who the family is. That's that's who I'm, you know, uh, most concerned with here. Um, the 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 I, the beginning of the uh, episode starts with the the woman from from uh, the nine one one. So the fifteen year old kid makes the phone call. He calls nine one one, and the woman's like, "Well, how do you know it's a human head?" Listen, nine one one lady. I wanted. I wish I could have been that fifteen year old boy because I would have been like, I don't know. I have eyes. Uh, that's why I think uh, it's a human head. You know, that's not something you mistake. You're never like, hey, I think that's a head over there. Almost every time you say that or even think it, it's most likely a human head. Most of the time, you're like, that's not a human head. You're never going, I think that's a human head, and then it, tur- it turns out to be, you know, a pile of garbage. It's it's if you think it's a head, it's most likely a head. Um, I, I, I hated that woman. I, those 911 calls, the more I hear 911 kind of phone calls, I, I, I get kind of annoyed at the, at the people working. They seem kind of dick, like a dick. Doesn't that kind of, you know, well, how do you know it's, it's that? Well, I don't know, bitch. Why don't you come here and we'll talk about it, okay? That's what I would say to that because it's kind of like you're not here. I am. Can you just get someone here quickly? Um this 15-year-old kid, I don't know. They, they don't really go too much into him, and I guess maybe because he's 15 at the time. I guess he's got to be older now. Um, as this happened, I don't even remember what year this happened. I don't have that written down. Does anyone know what year? The severed head? I should probably know that, but I don't have it written in my notes what year. I don't think it's recent. I think it's like 2015 or 2016 or something like that. Um, the the initial police officers that show up at the scene, they confirmed, oh, yeah, this is definitely a, this is definitely a head. Um, I'm like, yeah, call the 911 lady back and let her know because she seemed to have, you know, she seemed to be a little like, I'm not sure. Um, 
they said the head was in decent condition. It wasn't decomposed. She had gray, curly, fluffy hair. Uh, speaking of curls, if you guys are looking this on on my on the YouTube channel, you can see how ridiculous my hair is today. Um, and I also have like acne, which is also strange. That's another unsolved mystery. How I'm 36 with still acne. Um, we get it. We can. We, uh, there should be an unsolved mystery episode on that. Why Brian still has acne at the age of thirty-six? Uh, he eats clean, and we're not sure. Somebody help. Um, the, the the they find the head. The head is in decent condition. It's not decomposed. Like I said, curly hair. Appeared to be an older woman between the ages of sixty and eighty years old. Um, the tip of the nose, they said, seemed to be altered, like a little pushed in, possibly stored in a container. Um, they took the head, which I thought. This part made me stop the episode, and I started laughing a little, <laughs> a little bit. They took the head and they put it into an an igloo cooler. Like, you know, is this the best we got as human beings? We have an igloo, co- the same igloo cooler that you're you're bringing to a fucking Jimmy Buffett concert. You know what I mean? Packed with you know dogfish IPAs and and you know shitty. PB and J sandwiches to go to is the same container that we're throwing in human heads. Like, can we not do a better job as humans? Maybe just to I don't know get something else. They put it in one. It's a cooler where you just fucking close it. Like it's you know what I mean. Like you're going to the beach. I was I was annoyed by that for some reason. I was just like an igloo cooler. How white trash? You know? Can we at least get like I don't know one of those dry you know like those dry freeze ones. You know what I mean? Where they put the – it's like styrofoam. I feel like that was more – but that's the best we got as humans. It's just, you know, it's weird. <laughs> that's the – I have notes here, by the way, that I've I've uh, I've written down some stuff. So if you see me kind of glancing, this, I'm just making sure I'm getting all the information I want out in this podcast. Um, they pack the head in the cooler. They bring it over to, you know, the, the county morgue. Uh, they basically essentially do an autopsy on it. They find that the head is professionally embalmed. Um, they believe it was done with precision using a scalpel and sharp kind of intro, you know, instruments, which tells you that this is at least done by, it wasn't done by some dude in a back room. This is someone who obviously was in the medical field, was able to, you know, cause I wouldn't be able to do that. You know, this wasn't done by the mob, you know, like in the episodes of the mafia of the Sopranos or, or, or kind of like those mob movies where you see him just hacking away. This doesn't seem to be one of those kind of cases, um, where, you know, that's, It's all kind of screwed up, and it's kind of chopped in kind of weird places. So it's done with precision. They believe it was probably done with a scalpel or and sharp instruments. That would be weird if it was done with like a like a butter knife. They were like, yeah, you know, it was. Turns out it was a. Turns out it was a Cutco knife. Um, They, as they do the embalming, they start noticing that they have they find plastic caps over the eyes uh, with no eyes present. So they took the eyeballs out. I don't know. That that part made me queasy. Did anyone else kind of get grossed out by that? Like, I know we we have that. Like, I know we – I'm an organ donor. I have – you know, I, I just I, – I don't – that's a weird job also. Like, what do you do for a living? It's like, really? That's what you chose? That would be tough now to have that job and, like, be single. Like, you need to be married and then get that job because you need someone who's going to support – like, you can't be single. and be like, So what do you do for a living? You're like, I um, I own a funeral home. That's what I do. You'd be like, okay, I don't, I don't think I want to hang out with you anymore, you know, because you, you, you like that. You know what I mean? It's not something you stumbled into. You're like, no, I really, I really like, you know, dead bodies. That's what I kind of enjoy. It's like, all right, uh, okay, yeah. So I think you have to be married. That's my opinion, that you have to at least be married to have that job. Um, so they find a plastic eye, no eyes present, and the, eyeball, and the eyeballs were replaced with rubber balls. Like re- regular, like, uh, wh- what's that game? We had two balls. What's that? Uh, pick up, it's not pickup sticks. What is the? Um, I got. I have to look this up. What's the game where it's like two rubber, um, two uh, rubber balls? Um, jacks? Is that what it's called? Jacks the game. We have to like you have to bounce the two balls and pick up. Um, jacks the game. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It looked like two rubber balls from the game Jax. If you remember Jax, which I don't even know if they're still around. Basically, it's like you have to bounce the ball and pick up two of these kind of uh, star-headed things at the same time. So they use these two rubber balls, which they couldn't... The the one detective said he was dealing with this case, and then what he did was he went into the a pizza place, and he was sitting down with pizza, eating pizza, and then he looked over, and there were these two rubber balls that were sitting in like that, you know, like those 25-cent turn things 
at the supermarkets that you begged your parents for. You were, you know, every time you went to the supermarket, you were like, Mom, can I have 25 cents? I want to go over and get this toy that's going to break in five seconds. Um, that's where he saw the two rubber balls. And it essentially was, they said that that's not normal either. Um, I'm like, well, maybe it should be because it seemed to work. Um, but they, yeah, they put these two rubber balls. Um, I just like that there was somebody who was doing this, like cutting the head off, and then had to improvise at some point. It was like, D- dude, can you go down to the supermarket and can you go get me two rubber balls? Because I got nothing to put in these eyes, these eye sockets. I got, I got nothing here, all right? So you got to go do this for me. Um, yeah, so they, it was found two rubber balls. That's not common. Um, they said that the, the they were trying to make some sort of connection to, well, maybe someplace, somewhere – in the world, they do this. They put rubber balls in. They couldn't find that. Um, they couldn't find anything or any place in the world that that's common. So because of that, they're kind of stuck because they can't they, – they did any uh, – they contacted funeral homes. They were calling mortuaries. They were calling anyone who essentially was in the business and was like, have you ever seen this before? Nobody had ever seen it. So then you're in this kind of weird situation. Um, where you have these rubber balls. It's a weird thing for sure. But it, it, what that tells me is, is that it was professional. This was a professional and bombing up to a certain point. That's what it tells me. It kind of tells me like, well, you know, th- th- see, everything was fine until it wasn't. So wh- I don't know. It, it seems to be like maybe it was professional, like a professional thing. And then it seems to be because of that, I don't know how to – I think I just – I feel like I'm, I'm repeating myself. But, like, what that tells me is that it was professional, and then, but it's not really professional, if that makes sense. Um, it's kind of like, well, something weird is going on with this woman because of that. Um, because if you were in a professional place, that wouldn't happen. And because you weren't, they had to imp- – like, it's just strange. Um, so they found out that those rubber balls come from China, so they were not – they could not possibly uh, trace them. Um, then there's basically, you know, there's some the, some parts of this that are, are, you know, there's a guy who lives across the street, uh, a guy named Jay Grabner. He's a local resident. You know, he's very interested in the case. He suggests that the 15-year-old boy might be involved, you know, but doesn't really provide any information that the kid might be involved. He's just basically saying that kid is involved. Um, the 15 year old boy who finds this turns out to be, you know, he was cleared of any suspicion. He was very cooperative. He was very forthcoming. Um, there's a, there's a journalist in this that I really agreed most of what he was saying throughout this episode. He basically says like, I think that 15 year old kid was walking through, uh, the woods like he did every single day or every couple days. He was constantly walking through the woods because what you find out is that, this 15-year-old boy and Jay had some sort of friendship where they used to play baseball and this kid, this guy used to, you know, help this kid and then they had some sort of falling out, which I also think was very weird. You have a, like a 60-year-old man who's friends with a 15-year-old kid and they have a falling out. I'm like, well, why? Why is this guy who's not the kid's father or related to him have some sort of relationship Um like, with him, Jay seems like one of those, he's like that neighbor who's fucking annoying, you know what I mean? Everyone has that annoying neighbor who you're constantly, like, who you look at, and you're just like, oh, hey, how you doing? All right, good seeing you. And then you go in your house, and you're like, you know that fucking guy has dead bodies in his basement. And I think in Jay's case, he might have actually um, had full-on dead bodies um, in his basement. Um, he seemed to be too convinced that the kid had something to do with it. You know what I mean? Like he came in just like, I think this kid, you know, had something to do with it. And then it cuts to him like later on in the episode where he's like, I think there's three parts to this case. I'm like, you don't know anything about the fucking case. You know what I mean? Like you know nothing about it. Um, yeah, he's kind of a weird dude, that guy. He's just uh, – he's. I, I feel like I know, I know that neighbor. I feel like I've been around that neighbor, um, that type of guy. Um I want to get into the other ones, and I'll get back to Jay in a second. But there was, you know, they thought that the, maybe there was a say, they were, I like when it cuts to that one uh, retired police officer, and he's like, well, there was a say, uh, satanic cult uh, going on at that time. You're like, what the fuck is going on in this part of Pennsylvania? This is why you, I, I don't like Pennsylvania. And I'm sure there's satanic cults in New York as well, but fucking Jesus Christ. I like those people who are involved in that shit because you're like, hey, man, I don't know if any of this is true, but do you really want to find out, bro? Like, do you really want to f- you find out if this is actually true? Like, I don't want to know. If, if it's true, I'm like, I'm good. I just let me live my life. I don't want to know if there's a satanic cult. I just, you know, get a life. 
you know. But there were some, uh, they had some crime in that area that they believe was satanic in nature. So they basically were, there was, uh, there was a missing head in that area. Somebody had a, a body um, um, basically taken out. Uh, what, I think I have her name here. There was a woman who they thought might have been this head. It turned out not to be. Yeah, Teresa DiCarlo, who had, um, the, sh- her head was missing off the body. And, but she had died in the, in the early 1950s, and this head, they said, had basically dental work. Uh, the, the severed head that they found had dental work done in, like, the 80s and 90s. So clearly it couldn't have been, you know, that. Um, that was a, the only kind of potential breakthrough that they really had in this case besides, you know, Jay. The problem is, is that DNA, the DNA analysis, they t- had taken hair, teeth, brain, skin, which I didn't even know you could do all that. But they took all that, teeth, hair, brain, skin. They could not find any DNA anywhere because that embalming fluid deteriorates all the type of samples in your head. So it's it's strange, you know what I mean? It's really it's a really odd kind of situation because you can't get any DNA from this person. You can't find him. You can't track him down. You can't find any relatives. You can't do anything. So you just have a fucking head, and you're just sitting there as a cop. You're like, Jesus Christ, this is ridiculous that I got to do this. Um, that's at least how you have to feel because everywhere you turn, it's sort of a dead end, dead end, dead end. Um, until you really talk to that guy, Jay. That guy, Jay, seemed to be a little obsessed um, with that 15 year old kid because everything was about the 15 year old kid. You know, he thinks that 15 year old kid had killed his horse, Ginger. Um, he believed that kid had stabbed the horse because he was mad that he wasn't allowed to hang out, um, anymore with Jay, which also, also he's doing you a fucking favor. The second that guy, Jay says you can't hang out with him. You're like, thank God. Um, cause who wants to hang out with that guy and see pictures of his dog and shit. You know what I mean? Um, I gotta take a sip of water. Mm. Yeah, that dude, Jay, definitely freaked me out a little bit. Um, He had lost his dog, um, which I, you know, I I mean, I have a dog. I I love my dog. Um, But he lost his dog, and he kept the dog in a freezer, which, you know, okay, that's one way to mourn, I guess. I, I just... I love my dog, um, but he is never going to end up in my freezer. You know, when that horrible day comes where he dies, my dog, um, he's not going in the freezer. It's, you know, it's over. Um, That's not a, you know, and it's not because I live in New York City. Even if I had the room, I would not keep my dog in a freezer because I'm not a fucking psycho. That's what a psycho does. Is that you're like, I'm going to keep the dog in the freezer. I go, why? In case he wakes up? What the, what, are, what are you doing? Why are you keeping the dog in the freezer? You know, that's what they did with, um, if anyone's a, a baseball fan, uh, Ted Williams, the famous baseball player for the Boston Red Sox. You know, his head is a frozen in case he, they, he said he wanted to freeze his head in case they figured out a way to bring people back to life. Um, which I also thought was strange because I'm like, well, what about the rest of your body, Ted? Um, he, his head is just frozen but nothing else. So I'm like, well, what are we going to do with that? Um, yeah, I, I also, I'm a Yankee fan, so I don't, I'm happy his body's, uh, you know, not the rest. He was a hell of a baseball player. Look him up if you've never, um, I'm digressing though from this case. Uh, yeah, the guy Jay, I think that's the main suspect here. Um, when they really dive into his kind of history, um, he seems to know about, like uh, a body trading industry, which I, I didn't even know that there was a body trading industry. Um, they, they basically have conferences uh, in hotels and, and conference places, I guess, and they, they trade body parts like they're trading fucking Pokemon cards. I, I, oh, do you have a – oh, I don't, you have an arm? Or, I, mean, I don't really want an arm, but I can trade you this, uh, this thigh – uh, for that pair of ears that you have over there. And they're doing this, which I have an idea. This is just me spitballing here. I have an idea. Um, you, you allow one of those, make, make it the biggest body trading conference ever, right? You make the big body trading conference where all the biggest body traders in the world come, okay, where you could trade body parts. And then you light the building on fire. That's what you do. You kill all. We don't need these people in society. Why are you trading body parts? What is wrong with you that you think trading body parts is a good way to make a living? 
that's another thing that would be weird, like a weird job. So what do you do for a living? Uh, oof. Um, yeah. Do you you have any body parts missing by chance? I'd really like to. Well, you're interested in giving any any of that, any of that up? It's like that's a f- if that's where we're at as people, where we have industries. You know, I know that there's like the black market for selling. You know, like kid. That's why I'm like. You see people go away to, like, other countries for, like, plastic surgery. I'm like, dude, once they put you under, you're losing a kidney. That shit's ended up on the black market. I know that that exists, okay? I understand that that exists in the world. But it's like if that's where we're at as a society where that actually exists, maybe we should be pushing for the asteroid to come hit the planet and just restart. Because I I, I think that that's probably – I'm rooting for it if that's what's going on in this world that we're currently living in. Like how insane – to be at a conference and there, you know, and then they, I liked how they broke down. Like that guy Jay knew all about this, which I had, I knew nothing about. The journalist, the investigative journalist, didn't know anything about these things. I thought the pricing on some of the body parts was pretty interesting. It was the torso was a thousand dollars, the pelvis was twelve hundred dollars. The I think I know why. By the way, the pelvis is is clearly the most expensive because people are fucking freaks out there. The pelvis, the way that they had showed it on the on the episode was that it was essentially your, your sexual was like the mid part of your stomach all the way down to like 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 your thigh is where is what they were giving people. I'm like because people, I hate to say it, I know it's gross, probably want to fuck it. That's how insane of a place this world is. It's like, that's the most expensive part. I'm like, yeah, I wonder why, you fucking freaks. Um, the pelvis was 1200 bucks. The head was 500 And then the kneecap was 250 And I'm like, yeah, that kind of makes sense because you can't fuck uh, a tw- uh, like a meniscus. You know what I mean? But the other ones, you can almost all fuck. And that's how gross of a world we live in is that there's people who are, you know, like that. Um, there's a great bit by Sam Kinison, who's a comedian. If you guys, uh, he's a comedian from the 80s. He died. Very, very funny. Um, he has a bit about that that's really fucked up. But watch it. It's, it's very, it's very, it's very funny. Um, it's very funny. I just thought the pricing on that was wild. And then I figured it out. I was like, oh, I think that's because people are um, absolutely disgusting in every which way. Um, I didn't realize that there are these sort of trading, you know, like, I, the journalist said, like, oh, yeah, they do it to – they trade this body parts for research. This is why you don't, like, sell your body – like, you know, remember you used to hear, like, uh, stories um, where they'd be like, oh, he, he donated his body to science. I'm not – this is where it ends up. It ends up in, in fucking uh, western Pennsylvania. That's where your head is going to end up. I'm absolutely never donating my body to science, okay? Nah. Not, not a shot in hell because this is where it ends up. Like I don't want – no, put me in the ground, baby. Put me in the ground. No chopping up. Not, put me right into the ground. You're not selling my shit to science because it ends up in Jay's fucking basement with your nose pushed up, you know, pushed up against the thing. Um, I don't think it ends up for research at all. I, I think like, you know uh, – like, do people really believe that these people at these conferences are there for research? Is that what you really think? Because if they were there for research, why wouldn't – if the people are there for research, why don't they just go to a lab where it's like, you know, uh, sanitary maybe? How about that? How about just a sanitary sanitary place? You know, why, why, why are we meeting in the, in, a, in the conference room of the Holiday Inn um, and then your shit ends up thrown in a dumpster? Which the journalist says that he could, he didn't even know that, and he had done research in that, and that guy Jay knew that. I'm like, this guy's dumpster diving for fucking body parts. If you guys haven't figured it out, that's my theory on this case, that this guy Jay 100% got that head because he was obsessed with that 15-year-old kid. Um, and then he planted it there, and he wanted the 15-year-old kid to find it, and he wanted that kid to go to jail for fucking murder. That's what he wanted because I think he was so gung-ho about that kid killing his horse. It's it, To me, it's cut and dry. I think he had something to do with it. And I do think that head came from one of those conferences where it could – that head could be from another country. You guys hear that? You guys hear that music? That was from outside. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but there was just loud music that some guy just bla- came by blasting. I was like, in my headphones, I'm like, wait, is that me? Am I having a stroke? Um, yeah, I, like I said, Jay's definitely that, you know, that that dude. Um, 
I like the part where they were talking about his dog as well, and then he said, "Oh, the dog's in the freezer." And then they he shows you opening up the freezer. And do you see how much medication was in that freezer? Was that not completely insane? I mean, there was I don't know how many how many medicine things were there. What were there? Fifty? It's like, yeah, this guy clearly was not mentally stable. And then obviously it comes to the you kinda come to find out at the end, um, that he ended up committing suicide, which, you know, is sad. It makes you I don't want stuff like that to happen. Um you know, to a guy, he seemed to be kind of a guy struggling. I mean, he took a lie detector test and it was just, you know, when you got a guy who freaks out like that about a lie, I'll take the goddamn test now. They think I had something to do with that head. I'll take the test. I'm like, you did it. Like anytime someone freaks out like that, I'm like, yeah, you 100% didn't, uh, excuse me, did it. And then not only that is that he does it. And then they're like, you 100% are lying about the answers that you gave us. So it's not exactly that you're lying about the questions. That's the thing about lie detector tests. It's like it may not necessarily mean that you lied about. That's why they're uh, irremissible in court or something like that. If that's the word. Um, it's like you're not it, – it, you can't trust it because he may not be lying about the questions, but he's lying. His body – they basically – they test your breathing and your heart rates and stuff like that. And Like he 100 percent, I think, lied in those questions. Um, I do think he had something to do with it. I do think it was he was just mad at that 15-year-old kid. Um yeah, like as a, as far as like a case like this, it's kind of one of those weird ones. I feel like you may never get the answer on it because you can't get any DNA. And that's kind of what we base every sort of case on now is sort of like being able to catch the DNA um, and being able to put it to someone else, you know. Um, so anyway, that's what I – that's the – that's what kind of my wrap-up on this case. I mean I think that they're – I just want to make sure – I mean there was a couple theories um, – about it, I'll just kind of read it to you. I mean, there was a potential link to that Teresa De Carlo. The comparison, you know, on the, it, they said it was close in the photos. I didn't think the photos were that close. I thought they were actually kind of different. Um, both individuals were around the age that it was possible, but the dental work throws that off, so that's you know out. Uh, the funeral home theory was that the embalmed state of the head suggested it was prepared for a funeral. Bodies can lay in funeral homes for days before cremation, allowing potential tampering. Investigation into, you know, funeral directors selling body parts led to exploring the black market connections. So, I mean, it's all the things we've already kind of, you know, discussed. But these were all kind of, you know, uh, possibilities. I I think that guy Jay was just the dude, you know, it's just too convenient. It's too convenient of a case. This guy is flipping out about it. He's also living in front of the house. He also has the telescope that's pointing in the exact direction um, of where the, you know, where the head was found. He seemed to know that that boy, that 15 year old kid was walking across that area all the time. I bet you he didn't like it. He was probably looking at the kid on the telescope, like, fuck this kid. I'm going to get this kid. I'm going to get him in trouble. Um, you know, and that's just what I, that's what I, you know, kind of feel. There is some ongoing and speculation, uh, and, 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 uh, investigation on the case. They say, uh, Hold on. Yeah, they say so. So the investigator continued with hope of identifying who she w uh, is and discovering, you know, the truth behind her death. Um, I have a funny feeling she died in natural causes and donated her body to science. That's my guess. And then the science was probably in some shit country like, you know, uh, you know, Brazil or something like that or, or, you know, Paraguay. Not that they're necessarily shit countries, but I mean countries where black market things seem to be happening more than the United States. I know it happens here as well because I know people will write me like, you know, that happens in the United States. I understand. But it seems to happen more in other countries. Um, they seemed – the investigators seemed very sincere and they wanted to kind of solve the case. But I think it's one of those things that like you're – when your main guy – kills himself uh, there's really no other indications there was no other way to find out who did this so you know i think it's one of those things that'll just kind of remain unsolved um i pray that somebody you know we can find out what happened um but it, i i honestly don't think uh you're really ever gonna be able to um anyway all right that was it. Uh, again, follow me on Instagram at I A M B R Y A N M C K E N N A at I am Brian McKenna. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this podcast. I am enjoy, I do enjoy wrapping it up with you guys and kind of, you know, talking shit about uh, some of these cases. Um, I am trying to keep the episodes kind of under, um, under forty minutes. You know what I mean? Just because I just turned down the light because I didn't realize that the whole episode I had a huge glare on my face. Sorry, everyone watching this uh, on YouTube. Um, 
I, I try to keep the episodes, you know, under 35, 40 minutes because let's be honest, you guys don't, no one has the time. You know what I mean? This isn't a, a podcast where you need to go longer than that. It's just kind of wrap it up and having some fun and kind of talking some bullshit and some theories. So uh, follow me on Instagram. Shoot me the messages. You guys, uh, the messages have been uh, pretty funny, the ones that uh, uh, you guys are sending me. Um, and you guys said that the sound sounded good, so I guess I'll take that as a, as a win. So, um, all right. Thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure to follow the podcast, like it, subscribe, all that good shit, and I'll see you guys for the next case.